Good morning. Pray with me, please. Lord, we thank you for this day that you've given us, allowed us to be part of, and uh, the day that we pray that uh, Christians everywhere would give back to you. And we welcome you here in our worship service this morning. Lord, and we uh, pray that our primary purpose would be to uh, worship you and praise and thanksgiving. And we know that in the midst of our uh, gathering here that there are going to be people with all types of uh, feelings. Some uh, have had a bad, really bad week. Some are suffering from uh, health issues and many are not being able to be with us in worship here because of uh, age, uh, aged problems and some with other compromise and health problems and we just uh, we lift them up to you today and we uh, pray that as we meet here today that needs would be met uh, that we would uh, all be blessed by being here through the pre preaching the praying the singing and we uh, pray that uh, if there are here who have uh, decisions to be made, that uh, uh, those would be taken care of. We have uh, people who are probably uh, contemplating uh, church membership, and we pray if this is the place for them to come and worship and serve, that you would reveal that to them. We do uh, pray for Brother Kevin as he br uh, brings the message this morning. and. It, we do pray uh, that uh, you would be glorified in all that happens here. We uh, pray for uh, those who uh, are so impacted by all of the uh, things that are going on in the world today and in our nation, Lord. And uh, we just pray that uh, uh, the uh, basic needs would be met of those that have been so impacted by all of the things, the uh, pandemic and uh, the uh, fires, the floods, the winds, and uh, we uh, just pray for your leadership and guidance for our uh, government. And Lord, we pray today that uh, those who uh, would be here that are uh, how the needs that would be met and we pray that our church here would be a, a beacon to the lost and a service station to the saved Lord and we uh, just pray that we would be a shining light in our uh, town and our community and we just uh, Pray now again for the, uh, all that will take place here today on the church campus, the Sunday school, our worship service here, how the uh, music and the uh, singing uh, just ministers to our spirits, Lord, and we uh, pray that you'd uh, be with us now. Bless all that uh, are making this uh, worship service possible, and we just... Uh, praise you and I'll give you honor today for all that you are and all that you do and we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Let's stay together as we worship.
Age to age, he stands. 
pray with me, church. Father, what a joy it is to be here in your house, to come to celebrate you, to lift your name up. Father, I'm just struck by that song that we just sang on the lines, How Sure Our Salvation. Father, if we've trusted in your Son, if we've declared him the Lord of our lives and repented of our sins, Father, how true that is, that we are held firm in your hand, Father, that nothing can pluck us, nothing can take us from your hand. And that's what we come this morning to celebrate. That's why we gather. That's why we are here to be a light to this community, to point people to you, Father. And so I pray for us this morning. I pray as we, as we sing the songs, as we have your word read over us, Father, that we would have a true encounter with you, Father. I pray that if maybe we've walked in here with some type of distraction or something that's happened from this past week that would keep that from happening, Father, I pray that you would allow us to let it go, that you would maybe move it aside from our hearts and our minds and let us just focus solely on you this morning. And praising you this morning, Father. And we do pray for Brother Todd and the praise band as they lead us in song. And for Brother Kevin as he gets ready to stand up in a moment to declare your word, Father. And I pray for us as a congregation that that we would truly have ears to hear what the Spirit says, Father. That we wouldn't just hear that each week and just kind of gloss over it. That we would truly have ears to hear what you have to say from your word this morning, Father. pray this all in your holy and most proper name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, a very good morning to you, church. What an exciting day to be here in the house of the Lord. We're so glad that you are here this morning. If you are a guest with us, we are excited for you to be here. We are praying for you. Uh, it's just awesome to see what God is doing here at First Baptist. Uh, we've had several things going on and several things happening in the life of our church. Yesterday, we had our marriage conference that took place, and that was truly an amazing time uh, the speakers that Brother Kevin brought in, they did an awesome job, and man, it was truly a great time to have them speak and, and to talk to us, but the fellowship that we had with the couples that were there and the sessions that we did and going to lunch, it, it truly was an awesome time uh, yesterday at the marriage conference. Uh, but a couple of things going on uh, that you need to know about that's happening in our church. As course, and as always, I know I mention it every Sunday, uh, but Sunday school is taking place right after the service Uh, when we get done. If you are not plugged into a Sunday school class, we would love for you and encourage you to be plugged into one of those Sunday school classes. Uh, That's such an important time, kind of in the the small group setting with the teacher, uh, to be able to fellowship and have to study God's Word in that time. So if you're not plugged into a Sunday school, uh, we would love to help you get plugged into a Sunday school. That takes place right after the service here this morning. As well as if you got one of these handouts uh, as you came in, you see there's two announcements on the back. Uh, Tonight, if you are a youth parent, we are having our Parents First Youth Dodgeball tonight. Uh, So parents, if you've been wanting to hit your child with a dodgeball, this is your moment. Uh, Get ready for tonight. This is it. Uh, Students, if you've been wanting to hit your parents with a dodgeball, this is your moment. Uh, we are doing that tonight. That will take place after uh, church this evening. We'll have our normal activities as a student ministry from 6 to 7. Uh, then at 7 o'clock, we'll head over to the YMCA and we'll play uh, dodgeball. Uh, just for the flow of it, we made that parents first youth dodgeball, but that also is for our uh, volunteers. If you volunteer within the student ministry, you are welcome to come and participate as well. Uh, and we'll do that at 7 o'clock at the Y. We will do a true parents versus youth dodgeball the very first game. Uh, and depending on how bad that gets on either side, we might mix up teams after that but excited for that tonight to see how the Lord uses that for us to come together and to have that fellowship as parents and as a student ministry uh, as well as you see that next weekend uh, March 6th is our real men event so men make sure that you circle this event for next Saturday that is March 6th we're doing it from 3 to 6 at Hodge Creek Lodge uh, we have over here to my right as you exit in the back as well uh, we have directions we have little handouts Uh, for you that has the directions on how to get to Hodge Creek Lodge, uh, as well as we would encourage you to take some of those and pass those out to uh, friends, to co-workers, to a buddy, to a family member, uh, whoever the case might be, we, uh, I would highly encourage you and we encourage you to, to use this as an outreach event. Uh, but we're going to gather next weekend, March 6th, at Hodge Creek Lodge. It's going to be an awesome time. 
a, a fellowship. We're going to have a, a skeet shoot. We're going to have cornhole, uh, as well as then uh, Brother Kevin has several men. They're going to come, and they're going to tell stories uh, from this past hunting season or past hunting seasons. And then uh, we can think of no better way to end that event than having Brother John Finkley come uh, and speak as well. And so we're excited for that. Our real men hunters gather, stories gather in 2021. Uh, next Saturday, March 6th from 3 to 6. So make sure that you circle that. Uh, you get one of the handouts on your way out this uh, morning. Uh, but once again, like I said, we're excited for the things that God is doing here at First Baptist and how he's moving. Uh, but let's continue to worship at this time. Promises that are laid for us, those who belong to Christ. One is abundant life in this life and eternal life in the life to come after we die physically. We have that great promise of heaven. And often I think we, we use that as just a simple spiritual band-aid. Um, one day, you know, we look forward to that day. And, but we can better appreciate those great promises of heaven when we admit that and see it through the filter of this life can be very painful. This song we're about to sing, Soon and Very Soon, uses the phrase, no more dying there. If you've lost a loved one, uh, you know what that means, the depth of that separation. Many experiences we have in this life that are deeply painful and difficult for us to face. No more crying there. It is more than just a spiritual band-aid. And if we were honest, if, if we could pull back the facade, I think most of us would, would confess that we have enough pain and struggle in this life to really appreciate that there will be no more death that there will be no more crying and suffering. And we look forward to that like nothing else. What an incredible promise it is. Let's stand together as we sing soon and very soon. Soon and very soon. We'll sing and 
shock of victory. Truly to God be the glory. Thank you, John, for sharing that with us and having that opportunity for us to worship through that. I might say you take out your Bibles and turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We'll be looking at verses 6 through 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 through 13. Uh, again, we're preaching a series of sermons that I'm calling the perfect church. The reality is we cannot be the perfect church. Uh, uh, we are human, we err, we uh, have fallen, we are sinners, but the reality is God has called us to be his church and to represent him. There's some key realities that we need to face as the church, that we will be faithful and obedient as the church too. Uh, one of those things that we're going to look at today is God's wisdom, uh, God's wisdom. Uh, many times what we do is we, we come up with what we know we can do as the church what we can achieve, uh, the natural response to uh, circumstances and uh, emergencies and challenges. And, and sometimes we don't step back and, and seek God's wisdom 
God's wisdom is different than our wisdom. God's wisdom is greater than our uh, knowledge or our understanding. So in saying that, let me read to you 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. Yet we do not speak wisdom among those who are mature. Let me read that again. I said that wrong. We, yet we do speak wisdom among those who are mature. A wisdom, however, not of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are passing away. But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages to our glory. The wisdom which none of the rulers of this age has understood, for if they had understood it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But just as it is written, things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard and which have not entered the heart of man, but all that God has prepared for those who love him. Look on in verse 10. It says, For to us God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God, no one knows except the spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God, which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. May we bow together in prayer. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your love and your grace. We thank you for the reality that we can't understand you because you're so great, perfect, and right. And Lord, we thank you for your Spirit because only your Spirit can help us to understand who you are. Only your spirit can truly illuminate your word. Only your spirit can convict us and lead us to obedience and surrender to you. And Lord, I pray that during this time as we examine your word, may you continually speak to us only by your spirit. May we put away any of our own knowledge, even any of our own history and baggage, but we only depend on your word and your spirit right now. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. There was a problem within the church at Corinth. It, it was a problem that they was literally tearing and ripping the church apart. Uh, the problem was pride. And, and pride is a, a very serious offense. Uh, pride, arrogance, uh, uh, thinking one so highly of oneself it can't be part of who we are as the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the pride that the church at Corinth was dealing with was their intellect. It was their wisdom. It was them thinking to themselves that they had concepts and, and holdings to how the world worked, how, um, how man's life is to be, uh, the reason of man's existence. And that was coming together, and it was really affecting the church in, in, in such a, a great degree. But I do believe there's an answer that we can get from this scripture. It's really, if you have your uh, handout, uh, I've put there four points that I think are so vitally important for us to grab hold of. And that's what I want us to look at this morning as we walk through this scripture. The first point is God's wisdom and maturity. And, and what that means and, and what that looks like as a mature Christian. The, the second idea is God's wisdom in this age. The, those are two different concepts. And, and we're going to look at how the wisdom of this age is truly fleeting, how it, it passes. The third aspect I want us to make sure we grab hold of is God's wisdom is the wisdom of God himself. And, and that's so important that we understand that. Because we look to other places and other things and other people to 
circumvent or, or to replace the wisdom of who God is and, and what he's about. The fourth and final point I want to make sure as we walk through the scripture that we grab hold of is God's wisdom is revealed only by the spirit of God. And again, that is fundamental for us as believers. And, and sometimes we don't get that and we look for other places to receive wisdom. And that's why so many of us are struggling in life right now. So many of us are, 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 are overwhelmed with everything that is happening to us. And that's why some of us, we don't know what it means to live the full and abundant life that God has called us to have in John 10, 10. But go back with me. Let's look there at the first part of verse 6. It says, yet we do not speak wisdom among those. I'm, I keep saying that. I said it wrong when I read it the first time, and I apologize. Let me read it again. Yet we do speak wisdom among those who are mature. See, God's wisdom is only for those who are seeking to be mature as they stand in the presence of God. Through this, Paul clearly helps us to understand that wisdom among the mature is really, it means that we're concerned about being mature and acceptable before God. And that's the reality. We're going to talk more about it in just a second or two. But we have fallen and fallen short of the glory of God. We don't know God. We don't know God's way. But there is a reality as we grow in Christ Jesus, as we mature in our relationship with him, that we have a desire to stand before him, acceptable in that way. Uh, the, the other point I want to make sure we grab hold of, I believe that Paul is helping us understand this idea of wisdom among the mature is being destined to perfection. We so, said, well, wait a minute, Brother Kevin, hold on. We can never be perfect in this world, and that is absolutely true. We will always deal, as Paul talks about the two natures of going back to the old nature and the sin and, and that lifestyle and living a, a fresh and holy, real new life in Christ Jesus. That waging of that war is there, but there is a time, as we sung this morning, about the coming, the, the glory, heaven itself, and we will be made perfect as we're in heaven, we're destined to that as mature Christians. Now, that word mature there, I think sometimes we just throw it out there, uh, mature adults. And, and we kind of use that concept and, and use that. But the Greek word there, mature, it means finished, complete, fully developed. A person uh, that has, in, in real sense, reach one's end and not that we can ever mature completely in Christ because we don't do that until we're in the presence of God but here on this earth that we live on right now as we walk in Christ Jesus we long for heaven we seek and and we reach the end by being mature before God he is the only person who is interested, that mature person, in God and his wisdom. He is the person who speaks, proclaims, and talks about the wisdom of God. See, people of this age, people that don't know Christ, that haven't come to a true saving relationship with him, aren't interested at all in God. Even if they are interested in him, is how they can justify or even ratify their lifestyle and in their own beliefs that they have designed on themselves. See, a mature Christian's desire is to walk and to please God. It's, it's not to, to walk and to, to please self, and that's exactly what People of this age, people of the world, focus in on. But we are called to something greater than that. We're called to be mature in Christ Jesus. Uh, go back to the verse 6. Yet, we do speak of wisdom among those who are mature. Look, a wisdom, however, not of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, 
who are passing away. God's wisdom is not wisdom for this age right now, nor the leaders of this age. The word ruler refers to the leaders that of the world. The leaders, uh, as we have this concept of, of the age that we're in now, it's the scientists, it's the philosophers, the educators, the executive, and I don't know if this is really a word or not, but the religionologist, the people that study religion and promote the concept of it, but have no faith in it. It refers to anyone who has influence, anyone who thinks about the world and life and draws up major, complex, serious conclusions about the purpose, the meaning, the significance of life. See, the, the wisdom of this age and the rulers, they, they make conclusions as they look at the world. But we have to remember something. The world is looking at everything through a, a lens that's been tinted and distorted because of man's sin. And, and they're trying to examine and look at things that were created by God in his holiness and in his perfect way. They're trying to understand God's ways, his means, his power through that lens of sin and everything that God creates, everything that God has put into place, everything that God has for man in general is tainted because of that lens of sin. So the philosophy that this world, that this age comes up with is tainted. The, the, the psychology of life, the, the true understanding of why we exist has been distorted because of our selfish desire and our need to fuel the, our, our lifestyle. The only true wisdom is of God. I, I keep using the word age, and, and you see it throughout Paul's writing here in 1 Corinthians. It's important that we understand what it means. It means that this world, this world that is passing as fast as the wind, which is here and gone so quickly, the wisdom of the world and its leaders is here today and gone tomorrow. It's a set understanding, a set time of wisdom. And the reality is that wisdom is fleeting. It fades just as quickly as each one of you and I fade away off of this earth. It goes on, and it talks about the passing away. That concept means the wisdom of the age and the leaders really are coming to nothing, being brought to nothing. Their wisdom is nothing. Their wisdom is non-existent. I know I'm trying to to just paint a horrific picture of knowledge and of wisdom, but the reality is when we look at things through that tainted lens of sin, we see the reality and that wisdom is fading and ceases to exist. Look on at verse 7. But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery. The hidden wisdom of God predestined before the ages to our glory. The wisdom which none of the rulers of this age has understood, for if they had understood it, they would not have crucified our Lord of glory. See, God's wisdom is proclaimed as a secret. Now, that's a hard thing for us to grab hold of. And, and I don't want us to, to, to carry our understanding of God's word and, and, and carry it to a, almost a, a Gnostic mentality that, that you have to achieve a, a secret that there's by you doing certain things that you can receive a knowledge that n no one else knows, no other Christian for that matter knows. But the, the reality I think of what we are seeing here when it talks about this mystery is, is the reality That man and our reasoning can't understand God's ways. And the reality is that 
we can't grab hold of what God is doing or God's plan or, or God's design unless God reveals it to us. That's hard, right? Especially in our age and in our society today that places so much value on seeking out truth. Uh, so much value on, on what's true to me may not be true to you. So much value in the concept of I have my own understanding of the world and I'm fine with that and it serves me well. But the reality is it, it's a lie. It's fake. As the scripture in verse 6 says, it's passing away. It's non-existent. No man can truly penetrate heaven and know what God's doing. Think through that. Remember the Tower of Babel that we see in the Old Testament? Their, their desire was to build a tower to God. Their desire was that they were so powerful and so mighty that they had become such a great city there that they wanted to build this tower up so they could really and truly know God on their own, get to him and find him out. But there's no way that we could ever do that. There's no way that we can even comprehend the things of God. See, the, the material things of this age the, is to know what the world wants us to know, where God gives us the things that he wants us to know, the spiritual world. Who is the spirit? How has he revealed himself in his spiritual age to us? So it goes back to only what God's wisdom is. What is God's wisdom? I mean, Paul preached about God's wisdom. He, he, he does it not just in 1 Corinthians, but he talks about it in, in most of his letters as he's trying to help his people understand this. The bottom line is what the wisdom of God is, I believe, is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news it's Jesus, as we talked about last week, crucified. That's the, the key element that we have to come and understand only by the Spirit of God, only by His wisdom, before we can have even a relationship or even start to comprehend what the gospel is, I mean, what His wisdom and what the world is about. So listen, I want to make sure I say this very specifically, that you understand me. No one can understand this world, our purpose, the reason why we exist, the reason why God created the earth without faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That that is our lens as humans. That is the reality that we must go through to grab hold of the trueness of this. But again, the leaders of this age, they don't understand the wisdom of God. This age, its leaders are at a loss. They come and they created a system or a philosophy or an understanding of, of what is important in life. How can I make myself feel good? How, how can I take care of my family? How can I be successful, su successful in my community? And, and they try to use that lens of, of their knowledge and their wisdom to, under, to grab hold of that. But really, there's proof, I believe, here in the scripture that that's void and not real. The first one is, if the leaders had known the wisdom of God, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory, as the scripture says. Jesus Christ is the Lord of glory, God himself. He came to earth to save men, women, 
boys and girls, he came not to save them from a short 70 years that they have on this life, but Jesus came as the Christ, as the Messiah, to save them for eternity. See, that's what the people of Israel wanted. As they walked on the earth, they didn't want to be oppressed. They wanted a militaristic leader to come in and defeat their oppressors. But God's wisdom was to save them from their sin. God's wisdom was to take them not for just 70 years, but to provide and have a relationship with you for eternity. And if they would have realized that reality, they would not have rejected Jesus. They would not have crucified him. The second proof that we have in this is the leaders of this world would never seen nor heard the truth. The truth has never entered the mind of man before. The things which God has prepared, look there in verse 9, for those who love him. The truth of wisdom of God is the riches of his glory and his grace can only be seen through Christ Jesus. The, the most glorious wealth of wisdom, of knowledge, the, the most wonderful understanding of what our complete life is about can only be through Christ Jesus. Listen, this is so vitally important because there's so many people right now that are trying to live a Christian life. There, there's so many people that come to church week after week, Sunday after Sunday. They, they invest, they uh, tie, they, they come and spend time and they try to be good and, and, and they, they try to do well with their family, and, but yet there's still something going on here. They, they don't feel complete. And the reason why is you're not looking at the world through the crucifixion, through the Christ himself. What you're trying to do is still hold on to what the world is telling you is important and is real. And I think that's one of the greatest concerns that we should have as the church is that each one of us as the members are trying to live by the world standard and not by the wisdom of God. We're still trying to live in the world. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that the way that I'm going to discipline, the way that I'm going to raise my children is going to be different from the world because it's through Christ Jesus. The way that I'm going to go to work day after day after day after day is going to be different than what the world because my desire and my longing as I go to work is different. We were introduced to a word yesterday in, in the marriage conference. And, and, and the concept is... Not what do you want as a couple for your marriage? What do you want to achieve as a marriage? The question was, what longing do you have in your marriage? And see, I think that's a reality as we are Christians, as we've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. What longing do we have in Christ Jesus? What longing is there for us that affects our work, our family, our friendships, our play, our desires? What is that longing? And it goes back to this. What is that truth? What is that wisdom? The bottom line is this. Man of this age has been created and perfection. Hold on. But man has corrupted himself because of sin. Man must repent, have faith in Christ Jesus, turn to God if he wishes to live with God. 
Go on with me to verse 10 through 13. And th this is the part where it talks about God's wisdom as the Spirit. For to us, God revealed them through the Spirit. The, the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. For whom among men knows the thoughts of man except the Spirit of man? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except for God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know things freely given to us by God, which things we also speak, not in the words taught of human wisdom, but in those taught by the spirit, combining spiritual truth with spiritual words. Very quickly, only God's spirit knows the wisdom of God. Human reasoning can never discover God or the things of God. If, if we were to stand honest, if we think honestly, we have to come to this realization as we see how great and how mighty our world is. Even on the limited knowledge that we have of the way the body is, is, was created, how every molecule comes together and, and forms us, how, how even this universe has come together, we have to come to a realization that we can't understand it. We can pretend and come up with theories, but it never, ever completely grasp it. The reality is it's only through God and his wisdom and the spirit of God revealing that truth to man that we can grasp it. God's wisdom, God and the things of God, is revealed to believers. This is, is the reason God has given us the spirit in the believer, that we might know the things that are given to us. I mean, think about that. When you come to know Christ as your Lord and Savior, you repent of your sins and make him the Lord of your life, you become a follower, you become a child of God. And God gives you his spirit, the Holy Spirit, and then the spirit lives in you. And that's God's plan, to reveal himself to you through his spirit. And only through his spirit. That's so vitally important that we stop trying to, to grasp God ourselves, that we stop trying to, to build a tower in our hearts and our minds and even in the church so that we can spy on God to know him, but that we're totally dependent on his spirit. So when we go to Sunday school class in, in just a couple of minutes, we're going to go into that Sunday school class with the desire to encounter God as the teacher teaches us. But we all, whether it's the teacher or the pupil, must be dependent on the Spirit to reveal the truth to us. If we try to take our baggage of life and, and our wisdom and our knowledge of the way this universe is, is given, then we won't grasp hold of, of what God is trying to teach us. I know that we talk about the Spirit sometimes with a little bit of fear because we don't want to be known as holy rollers or, or pew jumpers, but the reality is the Spirit of God lives in every single one of us as a Christian. And because that Spirit lives in us, empowers us, reveals truth to us, because that spirit works through us to proclaim the goodness of God to the world, we can't ignore it, we can't sweep it away, and we can't think that I can do things on my own. God's wisdom is the message taught by the spirit. The message of God's glorious wisdom and gospel is not a message of man's wisdom, but it's a message of God's wisdom and the spirit of God revealing that truth to us. So I come back to this and very simply put it, our minds can't comprehend this, but God has said, 
that each one of us is a sinner and we will die and spend eternity in hell. But by his grace, he sent his son to die on the cross for us. And that one man, God, Jesus, took on our sins and died for every one of our sins. I don't understand that completely. I can stand here and I can throw theological terms at you. I can try to rationalize it. I can try to give you illustrations about that. But the reality is, it's of God. And only by God's power can Jesus die for all of our sins. But it does take a response. And the Holy Spirit's working with each and every one of us right now. Coming in faith, repenting of our sins, and making Jesus the true Lord of our life. Now for us as Christians, we need to understand that Spirit lives in us. And, and when we can't take the world, world's view and the world's answer to life and try to live by it. It only can be by the wisdom of God and his spirit leading us. May we bow together in prayer. Lord, we thank you for your word and the opportunity to study your word and grow in your word and, and your word lead us and guide us and empower us. But Lord, we know it's your wisdom, your spirit that helps us to understand it, to grasp it, to live it. And Lord, I pray that we don't just mull over this, but we're convicted as your church about how we turn to the wisdom of this world and the wisdom of this age and the leadership of this age and we ignore and we don't even seek or attempt to allow your spirit to lead us to what is real and what is right. Lord, may we be a church that is focused and dependent on your spirit and your spirit only. And may we see God's wisdom, your wisdom. May we see your sized things. May we work in the supernatural and the spiritual realm, not just in what we can manipulate with our own minds. Thank you, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together as we have a hymn of invitation, I Surrender All. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come and worship you and encounter you and to study your word. Be with us as we leave here. May we seek your wisdom and your wisdom only. Be with us in our Sunday school time. Allow us to continue to grow in you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.